Hi everyone, praise the Lord. Greetings to you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Weeping is not weakness. Weeping is not a denial of faith. Some people say that Jesus wept. He is a man, not godly. He is God and as well as man. We know that. Jesus wept because of the reasons. When we see, when we wept, there are you know, the significant meaning behind this. Okay, well, how many times did Jesus weep? One, two, three? Yes. Some people say one, some people say two, some people say three. Bible says he wept for three times. He wept three times. Directly two times we can see and indirectly that means uh, apart from Gospels we can read one time that Jesus wept. It, here we see that it's not a crying, instead it's a weeping. You have to understand, it, crying is something some a boy or a man, child when gets hurt and uh, that is crying. But weeping is something when we have some heaviness in heart and we feel something that it is hurting us and we feel very bad about that, we automatically see that tears comes out of our eyes. That is called weeping. That's what here. In Jesus' case, we see these three are things when you say Jesus weeping for the purpose. First one, let's go. First one is John 11.35, the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. Shortest. You know why? Jesus knew that Lazarus was going to die. He knew that Lazarus will also be raised. And but what happens here? I want to share three things why Jesus wept. It may be people say that Mary and Martha are loved, not only Mary and Martha and Lazarus, they are loved by Jesus. Jesus loved them. We see the last verse that uh, people surrounded there, they say that how much he has loved Lazarus. Or maybe because of that, or maybe Jesus wept. Okay, what I think another, another two more uh, uh, reasons, or another one is when Jesus says to disciples, let's go and see uh, Lazarus, he has died. Uh, see, we see that Thomas is telling, let's go and die with him. So uh, John 11, 14 and uh, 15, 16 was we say, he says, let's go and die with him. And I understand that disciples had unbelief on him. Jesus is saying he is, going, he is dead and he is going to be raised. But disciples had no faith in Jesus. Second thing is, when uh, Mary and Martha were coming and they heard Jesus is coming, they ran to him and they started crying. So when Jesus saw them, a loud one crying, he also felt like weeping. Okay, let's accept that also. And the third thing what I want to say is that when Jesus says, believe that your brother is going to be raised, Mary and uh, Martha, they say that, yes, of course, Lord, uh, we know that he is going to be raised uh, on resurrection day. But they also had no faith on Jesus that Jesus can rise immediately. That is a thing. So these three reasons might have made him, Jesus, wept. Anyway, Jesus wept. My dear friends, Jesus weeps over us for unbelief. In Hebrews 11, 6, uh, it is you know, by faith only we can please God. Unless we don't, we have no faith, we cannot uh, please God. Now, if we have no faith on Jesus and we don't believe in Jesus and the miracles that he can do, Jesus really will be sad over our faith. That's what. The second thing is, second thing you know that, Jesus, while he was entering into Jerusalem, there were people celebrating and they're so happy about it. And Jesus even with a command, he says, if these people doesn't worship me, these stones can worship me. So they, they will speak, start speaking, praising the command. But later we see Jesus comes there and says like this, we read in Luke 15, 41. Let's read that verse. Luke 19, 41 says, As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it. He wept over it. Why did Jesus weep over Jerusalem? Because Jerusalem is a promised land. Jerusalem is a peace of town, a peaceful town. Jerusalem is uh, 
No, uh, it was something, a place that God has bestowed his blessings upon that place and his chosen town. But the people were ungodly and he saw, foresaw that it is going to be destroyed. That is a reason he wept over. For us also, he has an eternal place is ready like a promised land. If we are not going to take it seriously and if we don't consider it is as an occupant, then Jesus says and he feels very bad about that. That's what we can learn. The third thing is we don't see anything directly uh, in the Gospels, but we see the third thing in Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7 says like this, During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with loud cries and tears to the one who could save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission here people say that people say that jesus wept on cross as well as gethsemane but we can see that he was weeping not on the cross but in the land i mean in gethsemane so we understand that gethsemane is the place where he was pouring out his heart and he was asking father to help him before he go to take up this uh, great work he wants to get uh, you know, consult with the father and he wants to ask blessings and support from the lord so he weeps over it because it was not easy for him to go to cross that is the reason he just went to the cross we understand that jesus wept three times with the reason with the purpose not just like human beings just crying and pouring out their heart it is like weeping for his purpose and Jesus wept for our friends and he weeps for us also because we are considered as his friends if you are his friend he will definitely feel for you and he is beside you he will help you and he wept for the faith no lack of faith if we don't have lack of faith then he will feel bad and he wept for coming suffering and he had gone through that suffering and he triumphed over it. And if we are not able to triumph over sin, then he, Jesus, still he weeps over us. We have to remember that. And weeping, when Jesus was there, he was, no, he was with followers. He was with followers and he was for followers. Today he is for you and he is for me. May God bless you all. Thank you for watching till now. God bless you.